Hi, Team Gerwell. You are flipping in fifth with me, Mrs. G. Today, we are going to be talking about Topic 8, Lesson 7. And today's learning target is, I can use a rule to write a sequence and compare two different rules. So we've been talking all about rules, and I'm not talking about the kinds of rules that you have at home or that we have at school, but instead, these are rules in math. What has to be true in order for a table to continue the way that it's continuing? So here are a couple of vocabulary words that you need to write down today. Our first one is term. A term is the numbers in a sequence. Sequence, that would be the ordered list of numbers or terms. And corresponding, well, that's a word that in math tells us that they are terms that go together. You just have to figure out how. Go ahead and pause the video and write these into your notes. Okay, so here's today's problem of the day. Olivia and Bethany have new piggy banks. Olivia saves $2 each week. Bethany saves $4 each week. If neither of them spends any money, how do their savings compare after one year? You need to find the rule and compare the table. So in this case, what rule describes Olivia's savings? Well, we know she started off in week one with zero dollars, and then in week two, she, or I'm sorry, week one, she has two dollars. So what rule describes her savings? Well, add two. To get from zero to two, we added two. So now, what rule describes Bethany's savings? Well, she started with zero dollars, and in week one, she saved four dollars. So her rule would be add four from here to here, from the start to the week one, then to week two, and ultimately we need to figure out week 52. So what do you notice about Bethany's savings versus Olivia's? Well, it's pretty obvious. Bethany saves more money than Olivia does, but is there something that really adds to this relationship? Is four compared to two something interesting? It is. It's double the amount. So in week one, Olivia saved two dollars and Bethany saved four dollars. Four dollars is double the amount of two. So if we kept this table going and we said in week two, if we're adding two, because that's Olivia's rule, two plus two is four, and Bethany's rule is adding four, so four plus four is eight. Now we need to figure out week 52. Remember, there's lots of weeks between week three and week 52. So we can't just go ahead and use our rule add two here. We need to do something with the number 52 to figure out what we've got. Well, we know that if our rule is to add two each week. Repeated addition is the same thing as multiplication. So we would do 52 times two, which is 104. And then down for Bethany's, we would do 52 times four because her rule was four in between each week. And that equals 208. So here, let's try another one. Sydney is growing tomatoes and lettuce in the Clear Creek Elementary Garden. She collected the information in the table below. Find the number of each type of plant in rows three and four. What is the relationship between the number of lettuce plants and the number of tomato plants in each row? Well, let's take a look at our table down here and we see in row one, she has two tomato plants for every four lettuce plants. Well, then in row two, she has four tomato plants and eight lettuce plants. Are you starting to see some sort of a pattern? Well, how did we get from two to four and how did we get from four to eight? So our rule in this case would be T times two. So the tomato plants are T. So how did we get from two to four? Would be T times two is the rule. So here, four times two gets us eight. So what do you think row three would be? Hmm, well, we know that we added two each time up here, so four plus two would be six. 
Then we would know the relationship is t times 2, so 6 times 2 would be 12. Now we have to figure out row 4. Again, we're adding 2, so we know that there would be 6 plus 2 tomato plants in row 4, which would give us 8. And then the rule is 8 times 2, which would be 16 lettuce plants. So the relationship is the number of lettuce plants is always two times the number of tomato plants. Now it's your turn. Go ahead and see if you can solve this problem. Write down numbers one through four in the answers. Look at the rules up here and see if you can fill in the table and answer all of these questions. Go ahead and pause the video and come back when you're ready. Coming back in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, here are our answers. So go ahead, it says the first thing says to complete the table to show the corresponding terms. Well, rule E says to start with zero, so we filled in zero, and add two as we go across. So zero plus two is two, plus two is four, plus two is six. Then rule F was to start with zero, which we did in the first term, and add eight. Zero plus eight is eight. Eight plus eight is 16. 16 plus eight is 24. So what is the relationship between the corresponding terms? Well, in rule F, it's four times as great as the corresponding term in rule E. In other words, eight divided by four is two. 16 divided by 4 is 4, and 24 divided by 4 is 6. So if we were to extend this table out to the 11th term, rule E would be 20. So what is the 11th term? Well, we know that 4 times is great, so you would have to do 20 times 4, which equals 80. And then if we did the 8th term, rule F, which would be the bottom one, would be 56. So we would have to do 56 divided by four, which would tell us that rule E is 14. So make sure you've checked your work and you write how many you got correct. Be honest, it's not for a grade, but be sure to fill out that self-reflection and tell me if you're still a little bit confused. Remember, this is all new to you, so it's okay if you're confused. We'll fill in all of the blanks that you have and all of the questions that you have tomorrow. I hope you have a great night and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye-bye.